Hey there guys, Nordic Warrior here, back with another video, hope you guys are all doing well. So, sorry for the lack of videos lately, but I've been having some technical issues lately, my hardware just has been messing up and hasn't been doing what I wanted it to do, so... And I haven't really had the time to um, really sit down and try and get it all back to how it was, I don't know what's going on, my microphone is messing up, my computer is being an asshole, and yeah, everything just seems to be breaking, so, <laughs> yeah, I've been too busy to sort it out, so not had, really had any time to make videos, but let's talk about this Josh Warrington situation, so, one of the things that, I, that I've been talking about on here for quite a while, is the concept of fighters who, I personally believe, have a tremendous amount of talent or skill, but sadly never reach their full potential due to say either poor development or poor management or sometimes just not really having the right attitude or temperament to continue to improve as their popularity reaches its peak. Josh Warrington, in my personal opinion, is one of these guys. Those of you who have been following my channel for quite a while will know that I'm one of these guys who personally views Josh Warrington as the best fighter to come out of the UK in recent years, at least in terms of technical skill i would say that in terms of skill and talent he's a pound for pound level fighter whatever that means there's nobody else in the uk in my personal opinion who has shown the kind of versatility and boxing iq that josh warrington has at least not in recent years to the casual fans who might be listening to this this may sound a bit ridiculous because if truth be told that isn't really warrington's reputation is it if you looked at Warrington for a little bit, watching some of his highlights or even sitting through mo his most recent fights and just observing his general attitude and personality, he comes across as a guy who is tough, durable, but incredibly crude. He's incredibly limited and practically brainless. That's how he comes across to me when you look at the guy and, and say you didn't know any better and you just watch a couple of his recent fights. He comes across as kind of a, um, just a come-forward brawler who really doesn't think much about the technical side of the sport. The vibe I get looking at Warrington, watching the guy fight, and even just observing his general entourage these days, I get kind of a football hooligan vibe from the guy, kind of like Ricky Hatton. He seems to have been marketed in a very particular way and to a very particular crowd, like he's trying to placate to the piss head football crowd or something like that and that's the thing he's he's placating to these people and he's trying to act like a certain type of person rather than just doing his job staying humble and continuing to develop as a fighter i get the sense that he just wants to be a macho tough guy i mean he's fighting these mexican brawlers right these guys who are punchers i, I, I mean mexicans are particularly known for having great chins, for being able to punch, particularly in the lower divisions. These guys are not to be taken lightly. Yet you have a guy like Josh Warrington, who has, in my personal opinion, elite level boxing skills, yet very little power for a featherweight, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys, trying to win a slugfest, giving it the big one, you know, the let's have it, you know, all that tough guy nonsense, like a football hooligan, like a like a street fighter, a hard man, and it doesn't make any sense to me, it doesn't make any sense to me why Josh Warrington, given his background and given his upbringing, would fight like that, I just don't understand it. It's a shame, because if you look at Warrington's upbringing as a fighter, he's a classic example of a guy who came up the hard way. He wasn't some cushy, highly touted and well-protected prospect with a flashy amateur record and a career planned out by you know, by the likes of Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren from the early days, you know, massive promoters. No, Warrington was a guy who came up through the domestic ranks, working on small hall shows all around the country, traveling about, taking on all comers, fighting tough journeymen, experienced trial horses, and traveling around fighting genuine domestic rivals who were on a similar sort of path to him. He fought on the road, he fought for several minor titles, and he wasn't always the favourite. In fact, he was the underdog on more than one occasion on his way up, you know. But 
and, and and to be perfectly honest, when I look at Josh Warrington's development as a fighter, I see a guy who was improving bit by bit. I see a guy who was building his audience, but at the same time was learning and was showing the types of technical improvements fight by fight that, that very rarely you see from British prospects nowadays because of the way they're brought up. And perhaps more importantly, before he became a popular fighter, and before he started to become a box office draw, he was able to build up his audience, and he did so purely organically and off his own merit, which is very rare for British prospects nowadays. He was able to relate to the boxing public in the UK by proving himself in the ring, not only being exciting, but also very effective and skilled. When he finally got a world title shot, he earned his position by fighting the likes of Kiko Martinez and several fringe contenders and top-level domestic guys and having to survive a scare here and there, as well as proving his skill, heart, chin and stamina. Yet when he got the shot, he was a massive underdog. Most people at the time felt that Lee Selby was too big, too strong, too powerful and too skilled for Josh and that Josh was going to get schooled and maybe even knocked out. A lot of people thought this. And, and in that fight, he wasn't given that much of a chance. Warrington showed on that night that he was not only a tough guy, that he was not only a high-volume pressure fighter, but in all seriousness, that he was actually an incredibly technically gifted fighter, despite being the smaller man with nowhere near as much experience or punching power. Somehow, he was able to win almost every round and was able to get inside and completely systematically deconstruct Lee Selby with ease. So he later fought Carl Frampton, and it was a similar situation. Many people said Frampton was far too skilled, far too powerful, and far too experienced for Warrington, who was too crude, and didn't punch hard enough to beat a world-class fighter like Frampton, who at that stage of his career was still very well respected, and still had a lot left. Not only did Warrington win that fight, but he completely dominated the fight. He completely schooled and outboxed Frampton with relative ease and showed that not only was he the better athlete of the two, but he was the technically better fighter. And I don't know about you guys, but I personally don't think any version of Selby or Frampton would have ever beaten Warrington. If you look at Warrington's more recent fights, however, most notably the Lara and the Lopez fight, he of course fought Lara twice. Both of those guys were able to capitalise on Warrington's macho streak without ever having to show the kind of boxing skill that I believe he has. And and look, I, I know this isn't a popular opinion, but Warrington nowadays, I, I have to concede, nowadays he's not that likeable. Uh, there's certain things about him I don't like, you know, the illegal tactics, the attitude. I get it, you know, there's certain things about him that rubs people up the wrong way and puts people off. But I still believe that Warrington can genuinely be an elite fighter if he stays motivated. If he gets back to the fundamentals and stops fighting like a moron, I can see him beating any featherweight in the world and I would favour him at his peak versus any of the guys he's lost to. I mean, despite the lack of power and the overly eager and aggressive way he fights, he was still able to fight guys like Lee Selby and Carl Frampton. He was able to take the fight to these guys. These guys are genuine world-class fighters, or at least they were at the time that Josh Warrington fought them. And he was able to get inside. He was able to throw more punches, land more punches, take less punches. He was able to take less damage. He was able to figure them out systematically. And he showed elite level boxing skills in those fights. Elite boxing IQ. He won every single round against Carl Frampton, as far as I'm concerned, and I know that the official scores in the Selby fight don't tell this story, but from what I remember, I think Josh Warrington won the vast majority of those rounds pretty clearly, and he did so on the front foot using inside fighting skills, you know, he's a very difficult guy to fight inside, and to really sum up his um, technical boxing IQ, if you look at, for example, the Kid Galahad fight, right, Kid Galahad got He's a, he's a very difficult guy to look good against, right? Very difficult guy to beat just based on the fact that he's so awkward. You know, he's he's in some ways similar to guys like Rigandau 
and Jack Catterall in the sense that he's a southpaw or a switch hitter, but, but he fights in southpaw quite a lot. And what he'll do is he'll throw punches over your head and he'll pull your head down, he'll lean on you, he'll put you in headlocks, he'll tie you up, he'll clinch, he'll push you around, he'll spoil, he'll walk you back to the ropes. You know, he'll land a, a quick combination, then he'll clinch, you know, the, the jab, jab, grab, kind of like um, Bernard Hopkins used to do. You know, he, he's got that Bernard Hopkins, Andre Ward style of just elite level spoiling. He's a very good spoiler, um, Kid Galahad is. And, um, you know, what Josh Warrington did in that fight, and, and this was something that I think a lot of people didn't really pick up on, is he figured that style out as the fight went on. And if you look at the, the championship rounds of that fight, because he had a lot of problems early on, but if you look at the championship rounds of that fight, Warrington was able to manhandle, he was able to outmuscle, and he was able to technically figure out Kid Galahad, and he was able to avoid the spoiling tactics. The longer that fight lasted, the more it favoured Warrington, despite the fact Warrington was the guy trying to make a fight of it and exerting more energy. So, to me... Josh Warrington's done a lot of things in British boxing, which I think have gone unnoticed. He's a guy with a high boxing IQ, but unfortunately, as far as I'm concerned, he just doesn't have the attitude to make the most out of his ability. So, what well, we saw him lose to Lopez recently, um, and of course he got knocked out by Mauricio Lara, and um, I had a no contest in the rematch with Lara, which I thought he was going to win, and you know, to me, I was surprised by the lack of IQ he showed in those fights because I know, uh, and and I don't I don't change my opinion on fighters very easily. I know Josh Warrington is a world class fighter, and it's just a shame that he hasn't shown it. And as far as I'm concerned, he's become one of the biggest, if not the biggest, disappointments in British boxing. And I would like to see him improve his skills, stop fouling, and get back to the fundamentals of boxing. And work on pacing himself in fights. Because he makes these fights. Lee Talks Boxing was. Shout out to him. He was talking about this in a recent video. About how Josh Warrington. Makes these fights. So much harder for himself. Like, like he could make these fights easy. If he just stuck to his boxing. And did what he does best in the ring. But he, he seems to be so. Caught up in this football hooligan. You know let's have it. Macho streak that. He's just not interested in learning anymore, and he's not interested in boxing. And I, Look, I could make a, a, a long list of fighters who followed a similar sort of pattern. You know, guys who had some technical ability, but got caught up in the, in the hype and believed their own hype. And just tried to please the viewing audience a bit too much, if you know what I mean. And Warrington's one of those guys. I think Ricky Hatton was kind of like that too, but Warrington's even worse as far as I'm concerned, because he's a much more technically better fighter than Hatton ever was. He's much more talented than Hatton ever was. He's got better skills, better stamina. Um, he's just more technically astute. He understands the game more. He's very, very talented, but he just doesn't get the most out of it. So it's a real shame, man. And yeah, Lee Talks Boxing, he, he seems to, you know, he, he shares a lot of my opinions on Warrington. You know, we, we both think he's probably the best fighter in the UK, or at least one of them. But he just sadly hasn't proven it because he just doesn't have the right attitude, man. It is what it is. But yeah, if, if he's not going to improve, then he should probably just retire because he's becoming a, a big waste of talent. That, that's how I see it. He's wasting his talent, in my opinion. And uh, it's a real shame. Let me know what you guys think anyway. Thanks for watching. Um, just to let you guys know, for, for anybody who's wondering, some of you have asked me. I have more retrospective videos coming. So stay tuned for that. Um... I actually, because of the technical difficulties I've been I've been having, um, some work I have lost. Um, I, I put a lot of I put a lot of work into some videos, and yeah, I I, I seem to have lost some of my data. So <laughs> I'm not in a good mood at the moment, and uh, and I've been very busy with work and whatnot. So yeah, it's been a pretty slow past couple of months on the channel. I know that. So yeah, anyway, let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching, and God bless.